We know there are various ways to represent data that has been collected. In a previous video, we looked at that thing called a frequency table and bar graphs. In this video, we're going to take a look at a few other options. The first is something called a pictogram. And you might be looking at these images and saying, well, it kind of looks like a bar chart. Yes, it does, but there are some differences. Okay, first off, instead of just a straight bar, we have pictures, we have images, Usually we try to make them related to the data that we're looking at. So the first one is pretty much really, you're right, it's like a bar graph, except the bar itself is made up the letter blocks to represent the letter. But we still have the frequency on the vertical column and the uh, category on the horizontal axis. The second image, though, is really a little bit different. Again, it still kind of looks like a bar graph, but we don't have a frequency axis anywhere on here, and it's turned sideways. Okay, so in this image, we're looking at the number of apples sold for various months, and we're told that that little apple icon is actually giving me the frequency. A whole apple represents 10, half apple represents five apples. So in January, there's one apple, frequency is 10. In February, there are four apples, so the frequency is 40. In March, two and a half, so that would be 25 apples, and so on. So a pictogram doesn't necessarily have to have a frequency axis. The frequency can be wrapped up in the image itself. So you have to be given a key if that is the case, but it kind of makes it a little bit more fun. Oops, wrong way. Let's try going this way. All right, here's another one. It's called a histogram. And again, you might be looking at that saying, hey, that looks a lot like that bar graph. And you're right, it does. But there are two, two important differences. First, um, the, the horizontal axis, it's got to be a number. Okay, it's got to be numeric. And in fact, it has to be like a number line. So we're going to start at zero and go up to 20. Or we're going to start, you know, just have a section, but it's going to be in numeric order across the horizontal axis. So in this case, we're looking at various scores between zero and 20. So my horizontal axis is labeled neatly between zero and 20, and it's equally spaced. The other difference between this and a bar uh, graph is that the little bars themselves are right next to each other. There's no gaps in them except like we do have a gap here at the beginning, a huge gap. But then if you look at the frequency table, you notice we have two that got a zero and one that got a five. There's nothing in between, so there's no bars in between there. But then over here, when we're looking at, okay, well, there were 15, um, two that got a 15, and two that got a 16, those bars are right next to one another. So it's very similar, but the key difference is you have to have numbers on the horizontal axis and you keep the bars nice and tight together. All right, here's another one, and I know you've seen this. It's called a, par a pie chart. It's basically just a circle, and you cut out wedges of varying size to represent the data. Okay, and it should be representative of it. So in this particular picture, the biggest section is the green. If I look over here on the grid, it says green is C, and here's my frequency table that we've looked at before. Yes, indeed, that is the biggest one, right? That's the most frequent, so that's the biggest piece of the pie. Well, let's take a look at how do you decide how big to make that. I'm gonna go with the easy one here. If you were to add up all of those scores, you would come up with 40, okay? And there are 10 that got an A. So what percent of the pie should A's make up? 25%, a quarter of the pie. So you can think about it in two ways. You can think about, well, here's my whole pie, cut it in half and then cut it in half again. Great, that gives you a quarter. And the darker blue is exactly a quarter of the pie. That's our A's. The other way you can think about it is a little more mathy, and that is you think about the degrees in a circle. A circle has 360 degrees all the way around from the center. So I have 25% of 360 degrees, that's going to equal 90 degrees. So if I'm starting at the center, I wanna mark out 90 degrees, which is a right angle, and that will give me how much of the pie for the A's. All right, let me know if you have any questions.